Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Right, we'll uh, have a, uh, I mean, uh, we have already covered what is the basics of flight dynamics as well as many things about uh, classical control system as well as uh, uh, state space representation so far. So, this particular lecture and next we will uh, study a small overview about flight dynamics so that we can connect the material what is going on here for aerospace guidance and control. So, this particular lecture will take you through this uh, so called point mass equations uh, as well as uh, a major portion of uh, what is called a six of equation and then uh, we will follow that up in the next class with further concept which will uh, make us ready for understanding the relationship between what we are studying in the control theory to aerospace applications actually. So, this is the first we will see point mass dynamics and it all depends on uh, your application how you want to visualize the this uh, aerospace dynamics actually. Suppose you uh, you are interested in a long term trajectory ok, then uh, probably point mass equations are sufficient because you do not know do not need to know the attitude of the vehicle at any point of time. You just need to know the location of the vehicle as well as its velocity and velocity direction in a gross sense. So, really do not need to have uh, all details about the vehicle attitude, vehicle roll rate and uh, pitch rate things like that for, in for a long duration application. That is where this point mass equation uh, becomes uh, uh, relevant and it is mostly used for guidance applications actually. So, let us see what is uh, what is called as point mass dynamics and we are essentially visualizing the entire vehicle as a point moving in space. Okay, so, we will uh, and then relevant equations we will see uh, what I mean what all variables are there and things like that. So, basic assumptions for point mass model first of all uh, we are all kind of collapsing the entire vehicle at the CG of the airplane. So, that means all forces act on the CG of the airplane then the, the entire vehicle is just a point and acceleration due to gravity is constant we are not bothered about variation of z unless you talk about a very long uh, very kind of interplanetary missions and things like that when you when you really go far away from earth actually ok. Otherwise, for most of the applications we can fairly assume that uh, gravity is constant. Then atmosphere is uh, rest relative to earth we are not considered about this wind effects and all that ok. And atmosphere properties are also functions of altitude only ok. We will consider this especially we know that dynamic pressure is a quantity which is uh, which depends on density of atmosphere and that varies with height ok. So, atmosphere properties we will consider only as a function of height nothing else actually ok. And the force acting on uh, the airplane are thrust aerodynamic forces and its weight we will see that in a in a vectorial diagram next slide actually. Vehicle altitude vehicle attitude is ignored as I told the which angle it is oriented and things like that is not of our concern here. However, the direction of velocity vector is, is of primary importance because that will govern the trajectory of the vehicle in the long run actually. So, this is uh, picture really this is where the vehicle is located the entire vehicle is just a point here ok and uh, let us say the vehicle is moving in that direction v ok that is the total velocity of the vehicle and this x is actually like parallel to the local horizontal ok. So, the whatever angle that this velocity vector makes with respect to the local horizontal plane that is called uh, flight path angle or gamma ok. And most likely the thrust vector is associated as, as aligned with respect to the vehicle x axis ok, vehicle um, nose and things like that. However, the, there may be a kind of alignments uh, uh, small l, small angle with respect to the, uh, the vehicle x axis, but we will not consider that here. What you will see is the thrust is aligned with respect to the vehicle x axis. In that sense, this angle what you see is angle of attack alpha, ok. So, y is, uh, is the, uh, the altitude where axis and the x is the down range thing actually. That means, wherever this uh, uh, flight goes, uh, we are considering only on that plane, ok. This is not a three dimensional picture, it is just a two dimensional in, in the uh, pitch plane sort of thing actually. So, this uh, this vehicle this velocity vector v 
is uh, can rotate okay, depending on this alpha actually okay, thrust is the uh, thrust is the thing it is not aligned with the velocity vector and hence it will have a component perpendicular to the velocity vector which will result in orientation I mean uh, which will take this velocity vector away that means gamma will alter because of alpha basically. Okay. So, uh, with respect to that let us resolve the component in, uh, in various planes. Now, we have this uh, we know that drag acts uh, directly opposing to the velocity. So, drag is straight for I mean straight away opposing to the velocity and thrust I mean lift is perpendicular to the drag or perpendicular to the velocity vector. So, that is how it is all right and then weight we know it is perpendicular to the local horizontal. So, weight will always act perpendicular gravi gravitational weight and thrust is anywhere there. So, we are interested in this velocity level equation and acceleration level equations actually. Okay. Now, let us see velocity level equations are nothing but simply components of the velocity vector in x and y direction actually. That is all. So, what you what you have here velo this velocity vector if this angle is gamma then this is actually x dot and that is h dot okay. and then this is x dot is obviously v cos v cos gamma and h dot is v sin gamma. This is simply the component of velocity vector in horizontal and vertical plane uh, I mean nothing nothing there simple geometry tells us that one actually. However, you want to have a moment level moment level equations uh, I mean sorry the force level equation next that will give that will that will be resolved again into the this uh, perpendicular directions and things like that. Before you do that let us uh, I mean also remember that this uh, velocity level equations do not see forces and uh, do not see vehicle parameters they are simply related by geometrical relationship these are called kinematic equations. So, you will have two kinematic equations coming here x dot is v cos gamma and s dot is v sin gamma. The next is dynamic equations where your thrust and weight vehicle parameters everything will come into picture. Let us see how to resolve that. So, this this particular thing will resolve one in the one along the velocity direction velocity vector direction and one perpendicular to that all the forces that is acting on there. So, what are the total forces acting on this particular direction? The one component comes from thrust so that is given as t cos al t cos alpha one is opposing to that that is minus d so you have t cos alpha minus d and w has also a perpendicular w has a component because there is a gamma angle that is acting on that actually so if you see w uh, i mean the w has a component which is w sin gamma which which is uh, negative to v actually okay. So, if you have t cos alpha minus d minus w sin gamma that is the net force acting along v direction velocity direction and then hence by Newton second law this is m v dot. So, m v dot is nothing but t cosine alpha minus d minus w sin gamma okay, whatever component. So, that is what it uh, it comes there and similarly once you try to prop, uh, I mean, uh, kind of resolve this along the vertical direction I mean this perpendicular to the velocity vector then uh, see that this is the, there is a thrust component again that is t sin alpha this time plus lift component. Okay minus w cosin gamma okay, this this component is also there. Okay, so, that is what you see here and that is all equal to the net resulting force acting on that direction remember that that is like centrifugal I mean centrifugal force and things like that you can assume that way. So, if you uh, I mean the, this particular thing is nothing but m v gamma dot actually okay, m, in, m times v into gamma dot remember this is actually a force quantity this acceleration quantity v times gamma dot and m v gamma dot is a force quantity and that is like uh, centripetal force sort of thing actually. So, if you if you imagine a circle somewhere here passing there but velocity vector is tangent to that okay. if you if you imagine a circle okay, passing through this point where velocity vector is tangent to that then the net resulting centripetal force will be somewhere m v gamma dot actually. Okay. So, that is how you see that the, that is how this gamma dot is uh, will start uh, changing actually. Okay. I mean this. Uh, uh, so, if you if you divide the, the entire quantity by m, you will get v dot. If you divide the entire quantity by m v, we will get gamma dot. So, putting everything together, so what you get? X dot is v cosine gamma, h dot is v sine gamma, v dot is that, and uh, gamma dot is that actually. Okay. And typically in this kind of uh, problem, so we we interpret alpha as the control variable because that is where we have the liberty of changing alpha basically. Okay. So, that is uh, I mean the 
is suppose if, if you go back to that if you see, see a, especially a rocket let us say then you have a thrust vectoring uh, facility that means thrust and thrust can be uh, tilted out I mean that means the, this thrust deflection can happen it did not happen need not be aligned with respect to the vehicle nose actually ok. So, that is uh, the, the, that can that can act as a control variable really aerodynamic variable all sense also it is same you can, you can manipulate alpha by by reflecting the control surfaces through aerodynamic forces actually. All right, so putting together, this is the set of equations in state spaces form that we we talk as long as we talk about flat earth model point mass equations. So the earth is flat, okay, and uh, and it's not rotating. Okay. And under several assumptions that we several other assumptions that we talked here actually, okay. So under those assumptions, uh, we will consider these are set of equations that to deal with where x, h, v, gamma are state variables let us say and then your alpha is control variable ok and d and l remember they are also functions of alpha the drag and drag and lift they are certainly functions of alpha actually ok and uh, especially this mass quantity ok and thrust we interpret them as uh, as parameters actually okay. thrust can be constant in, a, in aircraft applications thrust can be time varying in rocket applications actually. Okay. Uh, thrust and mass both can be time varying as well if, if it is a launch vehicle or missile application basically by the way. So, thrust and mass are considered as time varying parameters h, uh, x, h, v, gamma are state variables ok and g is also a parameter by the way and then alpha is a, is a control variable here. So, that is how the state equations are there in the in this point mass model. I also note that this rest of the equation what you see here h, v, gamma are decoupled from x dot they are not really functions of x actually ok h is, I mean this v dot and gamma dot are functions of h because the, uh, through dynamic pressure this lift and drag will depend on h actually okay. whereas this uh, this x is uh, kind of decoupled we still need to integrate and get a value for x if we really want to plot the trajectory if the trajectory is dictated by x and h the coordinate x, uh, coordinate of this particular c g location is dictated by x and h. So, we still need to use that equation for integrating. However, this uh, for all practical purpose we can also solve a problem in uh, h v gamma uh, so coordinate only basically. Okay. Now, next we go to this let us try slightly complicate the matter here and then you tell ok how about a spherical non rotating earth. Earth is still not rotating, but we now will consider long duration flights let us say let us say let us say for example, ballistic missiles they will really travel a very long distance before falling the somewhere actually. So, earth curvature we can never ne we cannot neglect really. So, this effects has to be taken into account in that sense what happens. Now, let us say the for a moment the vehicle is somewhere here it is still a point ok Velos velocity is there somewhere ok remember this is no more uh, uh, tangential to the surface of earth surface of earth is somewhere here this dotted line what you see b is surface of earth ok. And then this is a this is a point ok where the vehicle is currently flying ok with a velo with a velocity direction that which is certainly not parallel to the tangent which which will result from there actually ok. So, it is it is certain certainly has some some flight path angle and all that actually. So, what you are interpreting we are interpreting let us say to try to analyze the the equations little bit better way we will try to visualize this in a in a hypothetical circle parallel to earth actually. So, B is the like surface of earth A is the instantaneous hypothetical circle parallel to the surface of earth ok and D is also like uh, uh, let us say D is another one ok this this dotted line which will be which will require slightly later actually ok. Anyway, so we are coming back to this uh, uh, this has a thrust direction again which is again, again at an angle of alpha this is now local horizontal remember this is this circle is parallel to this dotted circle. So, obviously, this this tangent is actually a local horizontal tangent actually ok. So, then you have this angle which is gamma ok and that angle is alpha and hence if you see that this is actually thrust direction which is uh, I mean sorry this is drag which is opposing to velocity and then lift has to be perpendicular to the velocity ok. And we also know that uh, negative lift direction is the centripetal force sort of thing. 
and hence we can visualize another imaginary circle around that ok for for which ok the center of the circle if you join this point this will be like a, along the lift vector actually ok. Now, we have several directions here. So, we can we have to resolve it properly and also remember this is a reference line ok this this particular line is a reference line let us say this is launch point or something about which we want to calculate we want to know how much range angle you have covered theta is uh, called as range angle actually ok. The actual range is on the surface of earth if you if you multiply theta with uh, radius of earth r e you will get the actual down range actually on the curvature ok on the curvature of the earth actually. Anyway, so now coming back to that, uh, first is uh, let us see again this kinematic equation sort of thing. We will also see this force balance equation first. So, if you see this uh, this particular direction, okay, V cos gamma is, is along this and V sin gamma will be along that. Okay. So, if you see this M V square M V cos gamma whole square by R, R is the instantaneous radius from, from center of earth, this is center of earth then that is the force that is uh, that is acting along that actually ok and that has to be balanced by m v square by r cos gamma actually ok. So, m v square by r is here ok and into cos gamma component is here actually ok this this particular component. So, you are resolving this this uh, this force quantity I mean this uh, sorry this velocity level equations and all that ok one is uh, I mean this one is acting along that the the balancing is acting along that actually. So, through that if you equate these two, you will get a relationship between this particular r, this is the radius of this hypothetical circle ok uh, and uh, this is the r which is instantaneous radius from center of earth actually that is the relationship they will have this big r and small r they will satisfy this relationship actually because of this force balance. Now, we will go back and resolve this vector along local horizontal and vertical that is that is where it will result in kinematic equations. So, r dot is again r dot is like h dot ok. So, that is along that uh, perpendicular sense so, there is nothing but v times sin gamma oh sorry r dot is nothing but v times sin gamma actually ok. r dot is like h dot. So, velocity is there which is not orthogonal to this this line and hence it will have a component actually so, r dot is v sin gamma and then r theta dot is nothing but the, the angle that you cover actually theta dot is remember this theta dot is uh, uh, angle of rate of change of this angle ok. So, r times theta dot what you see is actually what is covered in terms of the, this this particular direction suppose you take this way the velocity okay. velocity tangential to this ok this particular thing will have r theta dot and that is nothing but v cos v cosine gamma actually. Okay. So, r dot is v sin gamma again that is similar and instead of x dot I mean what we saw in the last uh, last time it is x dot that is like if you are flat earth it is x dot. Now, spherical earth is r times theta dot which is similar to x dot actually. So, r theta dot is v cos gamma actually okay. again similar quantity here. Then the next one is slightly complicated and you see that ok what happens to the other one actually. So, you are inter interested in m v dot ok and m v dot is almost similar to what you had the last time again. So, this is t cosine alpha the one component coming from thrust minus drag ok and m g is acting along that direction w, w is nothing but m g, m g into sin gamma component will also I mean act along this direction actually. So, m v dot is t cosine alpha minus d minus m g sin gamma. Now, we have to resolve ok one direction is that the perpendicular direction to that is that one ok that is where this uh, gamma dot equation will pop up. Again this m v gamma dot is the net resulting force along this direction and here you can see that one component comes from T sin alpha from the thrust there is a lift vector acting along that there is a gravity component which is which is there subtracting that m g cosine gamma and there is a m v square by r which is actually centrifugal force and here we have derived a relationship between big r and small r. So, that is where you can use that substitute that and then simplify this equation in terms of r. Remember our equation is r dot ok and big r is is not a decoupled uh, I mean relationship from r actually. So, big r and small r are related. So, it cannot be an independent variable ok. So, we will substitute this uh, this big r in terms of small r and then simplify the equation in the state space form again. So, what you are getting r dot is v sin gamma and r theta dot is v cos gamma hence theta dot is v cos gamma by r 
and then v dot is is what you saw here okay that's the v dot equation divided by mass and gamma dot is divided all these divided by mv actually okay. all right so if you simplify that you will get everything there actually so this is what you'll get okay remember this r is also a function of this r and gamma that's what we saw here actually okay you have to substitute you substitute that big r actually there. so these are the set of equations that we have to deal with as when you talk about uh, spherical but uh, not rotating earth okay that means earth is not rotating and earth rotation does play a play, play a role depending on if they, i mean uh, depending on the system equation actually suppose you want to start with uh, latitude longitude go to different lat long and things like that then uh, as long as they are not in the same latitude plane then things will be different actually so for, for that uh, i will not derive the equations and all but there are this relationships are available so then things will be getting slightly more and more complicated as you talk about more and more effects coming into picture and this will be more and more close to reality of course so for spherical and rotating earth if you talk about then you have r dot now you cannot talk about only theta because that that was a, a, along the what is called as uh, okay i forgot to mention this is this dynamics what you are deriving is all valid in the great circle actually great circle means uh, suppose you are uh, going from one point to other point okay and suppose uh, well uh, let's say if your launch point is somewhere here your your you want to go somewhere here okay on the surface of earth wherever you want to go so that's the launch point target point and center of earth they are three different points actually okay so these three points when you connect the obviously there that will go through inter that will intersect the earth center and it will result in the greatest circle actually anything parallel to that will be small radius circle okay so because of that it is called a great circle and whatever equations we saw here is all valid in the great circle plane actually okay so we are not consider the 3d equations i mean this uh, cross uh, i mean uh, cross range motions and things like that it is all down range motion still okay but here we will not worry about that the we are talking about the entire uh, 3d movements sort of thing we we consider rotating earth also into picture and hence uh, all the equation all the things we have to take into account actually okay so phi and theta are lat long positions here and r dot is still v sin gamma but uh, you will have to have latitude dynamics longitude dynamics v dot gamma dot uh, then there is a psi dot uh, equation also and things like that all these things you have to talk together all these six equations actually okay and remember this uh, this omega e big omega e is uh, is uh, earth rotational rate actually okay. whatever 2 2 pi uh, rotation over 24 hours whatever that value value comes in radian per second that 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 you have to take here actually okay and so this uh, if you see this this is more and more relevant to this okay the i mean this reality and all that but depending on the application we'll talk about that for i mean uh, we'll have to take select a particular dynamics for example if you are just firing a small gun or a small artillery you really don't need to talk about all this complicated thing here okay, the, because the range is small the time of flight is small things like that but if you talk about a ballistic missile application or a satellite launch vehicle launch vehicle things like that then you have to be very careful about accounting for all that okay so depending on the application we will be able to we will have to select uh, whatever appropriate thing is suitable for us actually so these are the various uh, notations which go along with uh, all these equations actually that is also i will study it out okay this uh, especially there is a, there is a bank angle also there is a lift vector turning the vehicle can bank and that will result in that and this uh, if you have a this velocity vector can now be resolved into both gamma and psi okay in this is the if you consider a plane origin parallel to this uh, local horizontal and there is a velocity vector direction that that is this is a projection of the on that plane so that uh, whatever gamma this this velocity vector makes this is flight path angle and with respect to a reference line this is actually heading angle psi okay so uh, this is uh, this is how we have to visualize the problem and uh, theta is longitude and phi is latitude also the things are available here actually okay so all these way, um, uh, variables interactions everything is given here uh, anyway so these are still point mass equations uh, remember that okay and uh, here the uh, you can think that okay we have taken sufficiently complex problem but things can be even more complex sometimes that people tell okay how what about uh, oblate earth effect that means uh, we have this earth is really not spherical 
okay or north pole and south pole they are really flat actually okay so if you have obliteness of effect coming into picture then there are correction terms available actually okay depending on in very very if you really want to go towards north pole then things will be slightly different there and then correction correct uh, correction terms will be available associated with this actually we will not go too much into that actually uh, for all of our uh, many of many many applications so starting from artillery to kind of uh, munition to aircraft to missiles to launch vehicles everything it will fall under the set of equations actually either you consider flat non rotating earth or you consider spherical but not non rotating earth or you consider spherical and rotating earth this should be good enough for for many many practical applications actually okay only on very high accurate missions and things like that uh, especially ballistic missile applications we talk about uh, this uh, obliteness corrections and all that otherwise is not typically not needed actually now okay these are still uh, what is discussed is all point mass equations then the more details detailed dynamics will come from what is called a 6 degree of freedom motion actually 6 degree of freedom model so how do you de- how do you describe that part of it and uh, this particular class uh, whatever time remains i'll not be able to completely derive that but i'll derive a significant portion of uh, six top uh, equations actually and we'll follow on that in the next class also and if you remember one of the previous classes especially lecture 7 this is some of these concepts uh, in a very rudimentary preliminary way we discussed actually so if you see any flying object we thought we talked okay there are very basic forces acting on that one is weight one is uh, drag and then there is a thrust force to contract the drag and then there is a lift which will which will balance the weight along with that there is a side force but typically the side forces are balanced out in a in a good flight actually even in a turning when you call the coordinated turn the side forces will be balanced out actually so they I mean all the forces will be there but side forces will be kind of uh, very close to zero basically we don't want side forces actually anyway anyway these are basic forces and then there are basic moments about this axis now we remember we talked about the body axis frame and we visualize at the cg and axis frame now because three direction motions you have to talk about and there is x axis there is a y axis and the z axis which will form some sort of a left handed coordinate system actually okay a left handed coordinate system where your where your four finger will point towards the nose cone okay and then uh, the your thumb will point towards the y axis and the middle finger will point to the downward direction z actually okay. these axis frames are very critical in understanding understanding the six top equations because you have to resolve these motions of the vehicle in all possible directions actually all these three directions now once you have once you define the coordinate frame you can you can grab your finger in the right hand uh, right hand coordinate frame sort of thing and then this your point if you point your thumb to the four side then the directions of this your other fingers will give you the positive direction of the rolling action pitching action thing like that actually okay so if you have xyz defined that way then the positive roll will be like that positive pitch will be like that and positive yaw will be like that so these are the not notions we have to remember before understanding anything more actually so we basically talk about uh, uh, this forces okay uh, ignore side force for a second then you have weight lift drag and thrust and then we have this uh, roll pitch yaw motion actually okay so in this uh, this this axis frame is still available to you so remember this is x axis this is y axis this is z axis here and this is what you see here x y z so along this x y z we have forces and around this x y z we have moments actually okay so force level equations will come from uh, i mean uh, the will define this uh, translational dynamics and moment level equations will define this rotational dynamics actually okay so that is that is where you have to see that and there also we discussed about this uh, uh, control action with then how these control actions can be accounted for and we saw that this aileron motion aileron are typically employed for rolling about uh, x axis okay so that's that's the job of the aileron and the, the, then we discussed about the pitching action which is through this uh, elevator action okay you can uh, this is a rotational motion about the y axis that is a rotational motion about the x axis okay and then we talked about a rotational motion about the z axis also so all these three things are possible as far as rotational rotational motions are there and we, translationally it can go in x direction it can have a component along y direction it can have a component along z direction so all these translational three and rotational three we will have to discuss 
and remember Newton's laws are all second order equations. That means, uh, you have 6 second order equations which will essentially result in 12 first order equations later. Okay. So, that is what uh, we will have to derive and see the integrated relationships and all that actually. And these are all cop coupled in a way because they I mean uh, depending on uh, uh, like uh, what you are talking about you can visualize uh, an approximately decoupled system, but in truly speaking they are all coupled with each other actually. So, we have to account for all these uh, coupling effects and things like that. So, let us see what we discuss here. So, assumptions involved again, okay. first we will start with flat earth assumption. So, spherical and rotational effects are negligible here and uh, models are available, so which will account for that also. So, this is not the restriction that we have to really deal with, but to understand the, the equations this is good enough actually. Then the we also, also assume the vehicle is rigid body, that means there is no relative motion of particles and no spinning rotors also. So, we are not talking about like helicopter motion things like that actually. Okay that will have a slightly different uh, mechanics coming into picture and that is why helicopter dynamics are also lot more complex than uh, than aircraft dynamics really. Okay. We are considering here aircraft dynamics and probably launch vehicle and missile dynamics here. And then we also assume that the there is a constant mass as well as mass distribution that means, uh, we do not talk about uh, uh, theoretically speaking we do not talk about fuel burning. Okay, that means, we do not talk about CG movements and all that, okay, CG remains fixed, the mass remains fixed, uh, the, the no fuel loss happens, no passenger movement in the inside the aircraft, lot of lot of assumptions have holds good. But remember, passenger weight is hardly a fraction of the entire weight, so that is that is justifiable motion actually, I mean justifiable assumption really. We also talk about uniform mass density, that means, if you see anywhere, the density of the aircraft remains same actually. Okay, so, ult ultimately it is not a very strong assumption either, because we are all talking about rigid body motion, where this effect of density is integrated over the entire volume. We will see that, uh, that is where this moment of inertia other things will come actually. Okay. So, this is not a very strong assumption either actually. Then again we will assume constant gravity, gravity force remains constant throughout the airplane body actually, which is very much justifiable. Aircraft is just a such a small object compared to earth dimension basically. Right? is just uh, uh, that is a theoretically theoretically justifiable reason actually. So, we just put it uh, I mean we do not talk about uh, see theoretically speaking gravity can vary along with height, but we do not talk about that much height variation here. So, that we have to account for that uh, that gravity variation with respect to height. So, we will not talk about that actually. So, under all these assumptions let us see how you derive all this uh, this complicated uh, kind of uh, equations of motion. And here we are also we have that we also have to visualize one more axis frame, which is called as inertial axis actually. Okay, it's a non-rotating and non-moving axis frame. Okay, typically it is let's say launch of launch um, I mean launcher point for the launch vehicles or let's say like a um, airport for a for a aircraft application or it can still be an imaginary point somewhere in the on the earth. Okay, so and sometimes people tell okay it's it is fixed at the center of earth and things like that. So, we will not uh, discuss too much on that, where all that you are telling is there is an inertial axis okay, and then there is a body axis which moves along with the body. Inertial axis does not move, but body axis moves actually okay. and if the aircraft is oriented, then the body axis is also oriented along with that okay, because body axis is tightly fixed with the body basically. So, if the, if the aircraft turns, the body axis also turns basically along with that. Okay. Now, if, if this axis, uh, this body axis moves along with the aircraft, then uh, on that axis frame, we cannot define the position of the aircraft. Okay. Because on that, in that axis frame, the position of the aircraft is always 0, 0, 0. So, we, ca we cannot get a information of uh, position of the airplane actually. So, what we have to do and, and as well as attitude of the airplane, attitude of the airplane, because the, if the airplane is, uh, is rotated, the axis frame is also rotated. So, the, the attitude information is also lost actually. In the body axis, the attitude angle is always 0 and the position of the vehicle is always 0. So, for that reason, we need another axis frame which is decoupled from those behavior and hence we can visualize the position of the vehicle as well as attitude actually. That is where this inertial axis comes into picture. Okay. Now, let us say this from uh, simple geometry, now we will consider some geometrical aspects and all that okay. and if you see this, we will consider this vector as R p okay, 
and we will consider this as a some particle on the aircraft somewhere in the aircraft. So, that vector is r I mean r prime rather or this is r p prime and this is r actually. Okay. So, then if you if you consider this from simple geometry this r r prime rather is nothing but r p prime plus r actually. Okay. And because p is the center of gravity or center of mass in a uniform gravi uniform gravitational field, center of mass and center of gravity are same anyway. So we talk about p is the center of mass, and hence if you consider this is nothing but dm, rho a is density of the aircraft. Okay, dv is the world control volume that you are talking about. So if you just take r times this dm and integrate over the entire volume, obviously that is zero. That's the that's the definition of center of mass. Okay, around around center of mass. If you just take every individual particle and then do this a volume integral, then it should come to 0 actually. So, if you substitute this r, this is r is nothing but this relationship r, r prime minus r p prime. Okay. This r is nothing but this minus that. So, you substitute that and hence what you get is this integral of this r prime rho, rho a dv, okay, this particular thing is equal to that that is there. Okay. But you also know that r prime Okay, uh, what is there actually? This particular R depends on where you are situated actually. Okay. But this particular R P does not depend on this particular this this uh, particle most I mean particle location. R P is that are the C G that is all. So the, I can take out this R P outside the integral okay, and consider okay this because of this, this is nothing but the entire vehicle mass actually. Okay. So hence my my R P prime that is in, that is essentially the vector which will give me the position of the aircraft okay with respect to this inner cell frame that is nothing but this actually okay so this relationship we will use it later actually so, just keep keep that in mind now we will derive this uh, dynamic equations and this kinematic equation will derive next class actually dynamic equations are uh, are little more complex kinematic equations are uh, not that complex to visualize actually okay. So, dynamic equations uh, are the equations which will directly see Newton's second law of motion actually. Okay. Now, if you if you consider this airplane again and then want to apply this uh, this Newton's second law and things like that, there are two level two two ways we have to inter I mean you can uh, we have to apply that. One is the linear momentum and another is the angular momentum actually. Okay. So, rate of change of linear momentum, this is the linear momentum of the of the uh, the particles integrated over entire volume. Okay. So, the total linear momentum and this is rate of change of total linear momentum is nothing but total applied force. Total applied force is one is the gravity force okay. another is aerodynamic force. Remember aerodynamic force depends on surface area basically. Okay. If you integrate it over the entire surface area then you will get something. So, this is surface area integral and this is a volume integral. Okay, m times h and all that is true. Okay, so rate of change of linear momentum is is total applied force partly through gravity and partly through aerodynamic and thrust forces actually. Okay, and similarly rate of change of angular momentum. Okay, is a, a almost same expression, but there is a cross product that you have to take with respect to r prime actually. Okay, remember that is that's your r prime. Okay. So, you have to talk about that and that the rate of change of that that is the angular momentum is nothing but again r prime cross that whatever force you have and then r prime cross that whatever force you have. So, this is the nothing but rate of change of angular momentum is equal to the moment generated due to gravity force and moment generated due to thrust and aerodynamic forces actually. Okay. Now, let us analyze this uh, this equation slightly more and then tell okay, what is what is going on here actually. Okay. So, this is this is what you want to analyze here and remember r prime okay, r prime is nothing but r p plus r actually right. So, this is what you will, will substitute here the okay, rate of change of this force that you are discussing here actually. Okay. Then it is this is like this okay. and remember this this integral I mean this uh, this derivative I can take out outside the integral now okay, because finite volume integral anyway. And then uh, I can I try to kind of uh, visualize the I mean the simplify this actually. Okay, so this dy dt out now, and then I talk actually okay rho a times dv now R p. Okay, this is this is nothing to do with this uh, 
mass distri where it is located actually because R p is directly this vector. So, I can take out outside the integral okay. and then I leave with this R, R is the, this uh, see this this volume integral once I take, want to take this volume integral this R I cannot take out of that okay. because this R is inside this volume it is a function of this volume, where it is located actually. So, I cannot take out that, but R, R p prime I can take out because that is that is independent of where this fellow is situated actually. Okay. So, with that and then again what is this actually? Because that is by definition okay, this is uh, nothing but 0 because that is uh, say just one second. All right. So, this is that nothing but uh, center of mass. So, again that is by definition of center of mass this is 0. So, we are left out with this d by dt d again d by dt of this this fellow is mass total mass of the vehicle and something like this actually. Okay. So, we are left ultimately you are left out with m into d v p by dt. Okay. So, v this velocity vector whatever is there with respect to this center of gravity the total velocity vector will will pop, pop, pop is like that m into the total rate of change of this this entire velocity vector. Okay. That is all we are talking here this entire expression actually. Now, okay, what happens here? Okay, this particular thing, this this is all about left hand side. What about right hand side? Okay, right hand side terms are nothing but this. This is easy because gravity is constant, uniform gravitational field. That's what you talked about, and this integral is nothing but the entire mass of the vehicle. So it is having m times z actually, and this thrust is a uh, okay. This is actually a surface integral. It's not a volume integral. Let me correct that. Oh. Okay. This is this is surface integral. This is nothing but aerodynamic force and thrust force actually taken together. Okay. So what you have here? This is like uh, uh, the, the, this is the left hand side that we saw. Okay, left hand side expression is equal to the right hand side expression. Now this this is this uh, gravitational force is nothing but mg. So, that is remember these are all in vectorial notation actually. So, all the with all the components level and all we have not discussed yet this is the total vectorial thing that we are talking here actually. So, m g plus this aerodynamic force is that x vector and thrust for thrust force is nothing but x t vector. Okay. So, this is this is how the relationship turns out in the vectorial notation actually. Now, uh, the problem here is uh, uh, thrust forces are typically applied in the body frame they are not applied in the inner in the, in the inner cell frame right what you discussed here all these things newton's laws are you remember they are valid in the inner cell frame okay they are not valid in the body frame because body frame is really not an inner cell frame right. so what happens the thrust force is typically but the thrust and aerodynamic forces typically happen in body frame anyway all forces moments happen they are act, they are acting on the vehicle in the body frame so, aerodynamic forces typically act on what is called as wind frame which is actually close to body frame and they are exactly same when alpha and beta are 0 angle of attack and, and side slip angle when they are 0 then these things uh, happen to be 0 more on that you can see from applied dynamics book actually. Okay. So, body frame is a rotating frame and hence it is not an inner cell frame. So, the the, the uh, locking effect that is coming here is we cannot rely on this thing as it is actually. So, we have to we have to be, take the help of something else before we visualize the components of the forces actually. Okay. So, they are because Newton's laws are not applicable directly in the body frame. Okay. What we saw here is all happening in the inner cell frame actually everything happens in the inner cell frame. I want to have a body frame uh, I mean the body frame levels of equations of motion because that is where the real action takes place as far as forces and moments are concerned actually. Okay. So, if I really want to visualize in body frame then I have to talk about a, a standard results in vector theory. Okay. If you take any vector a okay, then this equivalent to what will what will interpret in inner cell frame is nothing but S n in the rotating frame that you take about whatever rotating frame effect plus this omega cross a the rotate rotational rate will come into picture that is. Okay. So, whatever uh, angular velocity of the rotating frame with respect to the inner cell frame that is omega and a can be any vector. So, this relationship we have to account for if you really want to apply that in the body force actually in the body frame. So, the same equation that we have here suppose I want to apply that in body frame then the left left side of the equation I have to modify that 
and tell okay now that is valid if this if the right hand side happens to be in the body frame then the left hand side happens should be this way not the other way okay otherwise if the right hand side happens to be in the inertial frame i can simply leave with that okay so this is this is where the critical relationship comes actually and this is where it will generate this what is called as coriolis components actually okay these are this omega cross vp which is actually that actually makes the aerospace dynamics complicated if you ask me that's the only reason why the aerospace equations look uh, complicated actually because okay. this cross producting you have to account for that all the time actually okay anyway but we have a relationship now so we don't have to be confined with respect to inertial linear cell frame so let's visualize this expression all happens as it happens in the body frame actually so before we move a move a, i mean before we move along we will to decompose this now we'll decompose this uh, this vectors or notations into components now so this entire rotation rate is is con consists of p q r p is about x axis q is about y axis r is about z axis like that in the body frame similarly v p the total velocity vector will have u v w component the total position will have x y z component like that actually so we you decompose that Uh, this x remember are aerodynamic forces okay this is not position coordinate they are force forces actually similarly thrust forces will be decomposed into x t y t z t actually gravity also will have a component x x uh, g x g y g z because this x y z is not parallel to the inertial frame they are oriented with respect to inertial frame actually okay now this omega cross vp this particular term we have to evaluate that way this uh, this uh, and this uh, how, uh, matrix form determinant form like that actually okay we know that the cross product evaluation basically okay you have to evaluate this uh, sort of a determinant notation basically okay and this is uh, okay if you, if you really want that then probably you have to put one more bar here okay determinant there and then it is uh, like if you Uh, evaluate that so i times this q times w minus v times r minus z times p times w minus u times r plus k times this uh, pv minus uq so all that is there here actually so this con con this term okay i can uh, i can write that in i j k component in the body frame like that actually okay so uh, once i do that this particular thing other things are very straight forward anyway okay this uh, this is in body frame so this is mu dot mv dot m m w dot Okay, this is very straightforward. M G X, M G Y, M G Z will be there, and this this will have X Y Z component anyway, basically. So now taking into account all that, I will be able to write this equation that way. Remember, this is the first M U dot. M U dot comes from here. Then this I component of that, which is nothing but this component actually. Okay, so that will come here. Okay. and then the, the that is equal to the gravity component and all that mgx will come here and then this is a, a this x direction sources actually so that will remain there like that so similarly it will happen to all uv w components actually now what about gx gy gz eventually it can be derived in a more formal way like this this components and all that now this attitude angle will come into picture it's a function of uh, this uh, pitch uh, pitch angle theta and uh, roll angle phi basically and uh, very Very quickly, you can visualize that this this is the gravity force that is acting along. So, if the aircraft is pitched by pitched by angle theta, then this this particular component g x remember g x is opposing to this x direction basically. Okay. So, this particular component will be nothing but minus g sine theta basically. This angle is theta, so we'll have a sine theta component along that direction basically. Little component there. Okay. So that is that is where it will have. And then if it is it is not only pitched but after pitching it is also rolled actually. Okay, this is a pitch angle. There is a roll angle also, and then this roll angle will generate these two components actually. So one is g sine theta, which is opposing to uh, x x vector. Then g cos theta will have two more components: g cos theta into sine phi and g cos theta into cos phi. So one will act along the y direction, one will act along the z direction. It can be derived more formally also. We'll try to see whether next class probably. But pictorially, you can see that okay, one component what is coming as mg cos theta here. that will have two more components depending on this phi angle actually okay so mg cos theta resolve into this cos phi sin phi component will act along that actually so once you put that together and then try to sort out what is u dot v dot w dot that is where you will will get u v w dot actually okay we'll see you got it right you put the put this here and then solve for u dot equal to something v dot equal to something w dot equal to that so you'll get three state equations from there okay 
Now, these are all about force level equation, what about moment level equations? Okay. Again moment level equation we have seen this is the left hand side of the equation okay. and then this can be derived from, uh, from inner cell frame to body frame through certain algebra and all that you can see that details in, in this particular book. But I will try to simplify the matter by directly applying this force, uh, this moments in the body axis itself. Okay, so, and remember that the resulting moment of the gravitational field about the center of mass is 0, that is any form gravitational field anyway. Okay. And uh, uh, right, I mean the the gravity force is acting everywhere in the same quantity actually, all the all the particles of the vehicle. So, it will not result in any specific moment because of gravity, the entire vehicle is pulled down basically. There is no rotation effect, there is no differential force in, in, in between the different molecules and all that actually. So, I will ignore that term and then proceed further actually. So, what you have this is nothing but modified angular momentum term for rotating from effect, we will we have, we have noted that already that this also has to be taken into account. That is where it makes uh, the complicated actually, makes life complicated because that uh, that vector A can be any vector and this rota applied momentum, momentum is also a vector. So, you have to talk about a rotating effect which there also actually, actually. So, what is that? Okay. So, this particular term what you see in the left hand side, okay, this uh, d by dt of that, this is nothing but that okay. and this particular thing okay this is the d by dt of a cross b okay so that is d by d a by dt cross d cross b plus a cross d by dt of b basically okay so you interpret that as a vector that's a d that's a b vector so d by dt of a cross b is nothing but d a by dt cross b b vector is that plus a vector which is r cross d by dt of b vector. Okay. So, and if you simplify this, this is uh, any vector uh, with uh, a cross product with respect to that particular vector is 0, we know that cross product of the same vector that is 0 and then that is what is left out is again d by dt of that, again that has to be resolved into this uh, this vector notation components actually. So, this particular thing is uh, nothing but first is r dot okay, then plus omega cross r also. Okay. This particular quantity what you see here you cannot directly apply that actually. Okay, you have to apply through this uh, this uh, uh, angular uh, relationship actually, this cross product relationship. So that will result in R dot, and remember R dot is zero because we are uh, we are, there is no movement of uh, the particle with respect to the body frame axis. Okay, so the air, I mean the particles don't move, they don't vibrate. I mean there is a rigid body air product, right? So because of rigid body dynamics, R dot is zero. Okay. And then we are left out with only these quantities. By the way, this book uh, derives this equation in a slightly more complicated way. I have tried to simplify it as much as possible actually. Okay. It, it keeps this here and then derives, then further down the line it takes it 0 actually. It will result in double dots and things like that. We do not need to do that. Right away put it 0. Okay. That is that is uh, that is what it is actually. Then we talk about okay, this particular quantity, okay, what, you, what you have here, okay. this, this results in this particular thing okay. r cross d by dt of omega cross r right that is what you are left out with. Again you have to apply this moment or this uh, this uh, um, uh, rotational effects and all that. So, r cross okay, d by dt of omega cross r. So, this is r cross del by dt of omega cross r plus omega cross omega cross r again that again and again you have to keep on applying that uh, is, uh, to simplify that actually wherever you see d by dt you have to keep on applying that that way actually that is where things become more and more complicated basically. But not nonetheless it is I mean you can make it uh, you can track it basically what is happening. So, if you simplify these equations now you put it there and the, then omega dot and then r and then r dot is 0 again and you will left you will be leaving out with that actually. Okay. So, the moment equation if you see this left hand side is, is something like this complicated expression what you see here is nothing but the applied moment actually through aerodynamic as well as thrust. So, this is rate of change of angular momentum is through that and then you have to simplify that obviously when have a component level thing. There we have to talk about some standard results in vector vector theory again. So, you have a triplet basically A cross B cross C okay, that, that relationship you bring in and then you try to put in all this expression again A cross B cross C and then C also is the two products and all that actually. So, you apply all these it is not difficult to kind of see this long end algebra. And then you R is nothing but x, y, z components in the body frame. 
in the body frame remember that is not the position of the vehicle it is x y z with respect to the center of gravity of that particular dm that you are talking about that particle actually ok. So, x y z is the, the, the distance from center of gravity of that uh, control mass or something control volume what you are talking. Okay. Now, omega has p q r components and, and then you are able to kind of decompose that because you know this what is beauty of that entire thing now results uh, I mean whatever this cross product will have uh, dot products now dot products are nothing but scalar components and then we will have 1 1 vectors associated with that. So, that is easy to simplify after that actually. Okay. So, you put that all these things together and then try to solve try to simplify this results in dm. So, it will go through this uh, for example, this one r square r square is nothing but s square plus y square plus z square ok. And similarly, r dot omega dot actually that will result in that because these are all dot products now is easy to see that. And then once you once you simplify this thing it will result in some expressions like that. And this is need to see because all these things are nothing but moment of inertia. This terms what you see here is nothing but i x x this uh, this term what you see here is i y y this is i z z principal moment of inertia. And these terms were nothing but cross moment of inertia actually. So, as long as the rigid, rigid vehicle uh, dynamics is concerned I really do not need to know the mass distribution and things like that I just need to know the lump quantity called moment of inertia ok. So, that is that is typically a supplied to us actually is for the control designers actually so, supplied to us from structural engineers essentially. So, this entire quantity in terms of uh, in moment of inertia so I can write it in a very neat way. So, entire thing which looks so complex here ok this level is all reduces to in terms of moment of inertia this is rather simple looking expression basically ok. Similarly, this this uh, this uh, this other component that we left out can also be derived ok in a similar manner and you have uh, equivalent expression like that actually. So, you have this term you have that now put them together and then bring in the assumption that airplane is symmetric about x z plane. If in the x z plane if you tear the aircraft it is all symmetric with, with left and right side. So, in that situation i x x i x y and i y z will be 0 this is this cross moment of inertia. And in addition to that missiles and launch vehicles will have the symmetricity about x z and x y plane both actually they are symmetric about uh, both the planes. So, all these cross moment of inertia will be 0 in those situations ok. Otherwise, uh, this is anyway true for aircrafts also basically. So, that will bring in further simplicity in these equations basically ok. So, you will be left out with only these equations later actually ok what you see here ok. Because um, apply applied um, aerodynamics uh, components are LMN and thrust are like that. So, that is you are left out with that. So, you can solve this p dot q dot r dot from here because remember this is a linear equation anyway it is very very clear here. This p dot r dot are coupled through i x z the moment it is not there for missiles and all this is also even not there. So, directly you get p dot q dot and r dot here. Because i x z is not really 0 for airplanes you will have some coupling effects for p r r actually p dot and r dot, but nevertheless these three equations are linear. So, you can solve it and then get it for p dot q dot r dot. So, what you are getting here ultimately is this force level equations and this moment level equation actually. And if you solve this for u dot v dot w dot here p dot q dot r dot here that is what you get it actually u dot v dot w dot and p dot q dot r dot. So, these are what is the force level equation this moment level equation these are Coriolis component comes from rotational effects and all that this is gravity term ok and this is the aerodynamic for the thrust moments external mom forces. And similarly, here the gravity term does not come remember that ok the moment level gravity does not play a role and this is the coupling equation that you take talk about. Here the, the control surface actions will be significant here by the way it, this will be have a very minimal effect aerodynamic control surface action basically. So, details will be uh, I mean once you understand these details you will be seeing these things actually. So, this uh, now this C 1 C 2 what you see again this C 1 C 2 C 3 all these are functions of moment of inertia which is given like that it can be easily solved I mean the, from these equations what you have you will solve for p dot q dot r dot as, as a byproduct you will be able to solve this actually and you will get C 1 to C 9 all the things are like that actually. So, it is easy to compute this constant actually and then force and moment equations makes life more complicated because of this aerodynamic forces and thrust forces and all will be given and in the several component level equations considering various angles and things like that. So, this particular thing with this remember x t y t z t is force level equation I mean and then l t m t m t l t m t n t are the like moments and all that. So, all these expressions you have to put it together in those equations to get this force and moment level equations actually ok that is where the this dynamics becomes complicated. 
However, once you understand this, I mean this is we still can talk about all different directions of the velocity, I mean you can in a component level and uh, as well as moments actually. Okay. So, this is all dynamic equations, so kinematic equations and all I will talk in the next class actually, uh, thanks a lot.